My special guest today is Professor Flavia Sicatini, who is the head of the musculoskeletal unit at the Monash School of Public Health and is also the head of rheumatology at the Alfred Hospital here in Melbourne. Thank you for your time, Professor. Thank you. Now, you've uh, got a piece running in our 1st of February issue on osteoarthritis and the role obesity plays. That's right. Um, some people would say it's pretty obvious. You load up a joint, the joint fails and gets sick. Is that as simple as it is? Yeah. That's what we used to think. Mm. And, and that was despite the fact that for many years we knew that obesity was a risk factor for hand osteoarthritis. Mm -hmm. So given we don't walk on our hands, then really it does, has begged the question for a long time, can it just be simply loading? And, what we, and one of the really difficult things about trying to untangle the relationship is that when people get osteoarthritis, for example, of the knee, mm. they also get pain. And so there's been this idea of what's the chicken and what's the egg. And new methods of assessing joints using magnetic resonance imaging, for example, now allow us to look at early structural changes before people get symptoms. So you can start to untangle this association. Many people in the audience listening to this and many medical students and practitioners um, st still are taught and we still think of osteoarthritis as wear and tear. Yeah. Okay. And we are very familiar with thinking of the idea that osteoarthritis isn't an inflammatory disease. If you've got an inflammatory disease, it's something else. Right. Now, what we now know is that osteoarthritis, so if we take knee osteoarthritis mm -hmm. as an example, it's much more complex than just wear and tear. We know that ending up with osteoarthritis is the end result of a lot of different pathways. Now, with study, there's been a lot of interest in obesity. So mm -hmm. we used to think that if you're obese or overweight, you're loading the joint. That is true in part. Mm -hmm. But when we started doing studies using MRI, for example, so in people that didn't have yet symptoms, so yeah. that their pain wasn't what was causing their obesity mm -hmm. because they're now not doing any exercise, we found that if you look at obesity, obesity is associated with damage to joints, right. even in people with no pain. We measure obesity with body mass index or yep. your weight, yep. okay? But in many med fields of medicine like diabetes, cardiovascular disease, people started to separate body composition because you can have two people with the same body mass index, yep. but one can largely have muscle, one can largely be fat. Yeah. So when people, we and others started doing studies looking at obesity, mm -hmm. we found an effect of obesity as a risk factor for knee osteoarthritis. When we look, started to look at body composition, we found that it was being driven by the amount of fat a person was carrying. So okay. that started to raise the question of is the mechanism just simply loading or might it be meta-inflammation? Mm -hmm. Then what is being seen very clearly is that if you carry a lot of fat, that it's the mechanism is through meta-inflammation because right. fat, as you pointed out, is not just an inert substance. Yep. It is actually an endocrine organ producing lots of nasty chemicals. Low levels in the blood of these inpatients are associated with joint damage, even if you don't have an inflammatory condition. So obesity is damages joints, particularly weight-bearing joints, yep. through both loading and this inflammatory, uh, meta, what we call metabolically driven inflammation. And what are the implications of that for treatment? I think it highlights the importance of targeting obesity early in life. Mm -hmm. A lot of these changes are occurring very early in people's lives. So right. as doctors, whether you're a general practitioner or a specialist or whatever, 
you tend to see someone turn up in their 50s and they've got osteoarthritis, they're already a bit overweight, and then, you know, it's like trying to plug a dike. Yeah. So in terms of prevention and trying to deal with these diseases, we are going to need to be targeting obesity, but probably prevention of weight gain much earlier in life. So for example, young women are often slim yep. and then they have their children, they gain weight. We know that the Australian population tends to put on about 0.7 kilos a year. So fairly relentlessly as a community, we're putting on weight. So new approaches to considering, you know, stopping weight gain at some point in your life. Now, there is evidence to suggest that preventing weight gain mm. is important, that it may be more achievable than suddenly trying to lose yes. weight. Excess weight that people are carrying early early on, you know, like not, not hundreds of kilos, mm. like perhaps four or five kilos, is actually having quite significant effects, not just because you're loading, but because of this meta-inflammatory change that is occurring. The other implication is that there is a lot of research going on in the area of osteoarthritis, yeah. examining new treatments, including different mechanisms of reducing inflammation and so on. Now, they are still in the research area, but mm -hmm. um, you know, you could argue that osteoarthritis is one of the last frontiers of a big disease with no disease modifications. In the osteoarthritis area, this is now, in the research area, considered old hat. Yeah. But the areas I don't think that have still, you know, seat down into, into medical school, school training, but even in specialist rheumatology training, yeah. is a few issues. First of all, that osteoarthritis is not one disease, yeah. okay? So it's becoming very, very clear that even diseases that we lump together, the like knee osteoarthritis and hip osteoarthritis, are different diseases. They are driven by different right. causes and it's not going to be a one size fit, fits all. The other area that I think is important um, is that, that osteoarthritis is not wear and tear. Okay? Yeah, yeah. That is too simple. You know, it is a much more complex set of diseases, and that's partly why we are struggling to get, come up with treatments because yeah. they are a heterogeneous group of diseases. Obesity does not cause osteoarthritis simply through loading. Yes. If you have a person walking around carrying 20 kilos of excess weight, in some ways they are worse off being overweight than if you suddenly woke up one day and got them to carry 20 kilos of concrete for five years yeah. because the concrete just sack of concrete loads yep. but the the fat is actually metabolically active so you you can imagine loading a squishy joint yeah. osteoarthritis is an exciting area because there are now a lot of very nice trials trying to target, mm -hmm. including funded, um, you know, not only by pharmaceutical companies, but a lot funded through NHMRC, mm -hmm. examining things like statins as potential disease modifiers, zolandro, you know, bisphosphonates as disease yep. modifiers, krill oil, and so on. So quite innovative studies, and hopefully in the next few years, we will do better than we do at the moment. Thank you for your time. Pleasure. Thank you.